Ryan straight Captain Kenway. Kenway. Not a bad looking tinderbox you got there. You sound a bit green, horny gold. Is it envy? Because mine's bigger than yours. No, I reckon it's this Jamaican funk. I prefer the Spanish stuff. So, you've got yourself a fancy brig now. Fine. Well, I'm gonna teach you how to say it all right. And how to take a prize the proper way. Thatch, we'll catch you up at the old fishing village. Aye. Where's your helmsman, Kenway? I take pride in piloting my own ships, Ben. Keeps me alert. Let's make some headway, shall we? I've no need for schooling. How many prizes did we take together as privateers? <laughs> There's a chasm of difference between joining a raid and captaining one. We're looking out for merchants, boys! Them that's fat with cargo! Find us a schooner with that spyglass, Kenway. You'll get yourself a glimpse of what sort of cargo they're shipping, and a general idea of their toughness. Are you trifling with me, lad? Take out your spyglass. I dug his grave with a silver spade. I dug his grave with a silver spade. Ah! Like that. Use your glass. There's a prize worth taking. Good. Take us in close. After you subdue a prize, project authority. Demand respect that you would never give yourself. This weaves a spell. For your victims must always have idea that you could snap at any moment and unseat them from friction to stern. Fire what cannons you will, and land a few strikes if you must, but for God's sake don't sink them. Que tengo un buen día, señor. I am Captain Hornigold. This is my crew. We're sailors like yourselves, but quite unalike in our purpose. For we intend to take all that you owe. Yet no harm shall befall any man so long as he remains at ease. Is that clear? No me mate, señor. Tengo familia. Se lo suplico. 
Anyone speak English? English. Little bit. Tell your friends we're stealing your goods. And we won't hurt nobody if everyone stays as still as a sandbar. You got that? Please do repeat. Oh, for fuck's sake. Lock them in the hole and take everything that isn't nailed down. It's a shaky feeling sailing about with this much stolen cargo. Get used to it. We'll need to take a few more prizes to make this a profitable day. Good take today, Kenway. Half a dozen scores of that size and you'll be set for a year. Now let's sell this cargo and fix up your jack door with a few more trinkets. Sod it, yeah. I'm looking for a prize that'll set me up for life. I'll be king of the West Indies, then. We came to Nassau to get away from the likes of kings. Well, I'll be a man of property and promise anyway. Jesus, let that dream go, lad. Nassau is the place to be. Not in. Do you ever dream of the big score? A ship so full of gold and silver, you just split it and sail home. Sure, but it's only a dream. Every man hopes to find a dozen chests of gold with no owners. They're as rare as an honest king. Ship that ever did sail, sailed on a rich on a windy day, and we're waiting for the day, wait for the day, wait for the day that we get our pay. She was built in velvet tights, held together with bits of toy, and we're waiting for the day, wait for the day, wait for the day that we get our pay. Nothing in a galley, nothing in a hole, a skipper's turned in with a bag of gold. And we'll wait for a day, wait for a day, wait for a day, then we get off. Our oh, four foot nest, they sprang a leak. Here I pour out in the street. And we'll wait for a day, wait Robert, for a day, there's a man of hope there, sir. Get off. We popped our way round Scalby Nest when a wind back. Fatten yourselves! We'll wait for a day, wait for a day, wait for a day, then we get off. Till the armor and up to top of you blighters come for the round. Wait Those for the day, toys. wait for the day, Bearing wait for the day, 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 that we get off. Oh, Gallant, Miles, Stark! I know she's a good sailor. Now prove it. All in the stun. 
¿Puedo ayudarlo con algo? I take today. Keep this up, and Nassau will be the first city where men and women may live as God made them. Easy and free. All it takes is a few drops of blood, sweat, and a swatch of cloth. We fly no colors out here. Praise the lack of them. So let the black flag signal nothing but your allegiance to man's natural freedoms. This one's yours. Light proud. I will. A hand over the docket I lend you. If we're to keep our Republic afloat, we'll need guns as well as gold. That means attacking the Navy. So long as their flying King Philip's colors will not offend our own monarch. As you've likely seen, the number of merchants roving these waters is three score the number of military ships. Aye, easy purchase, but in small doses. Right. So to lure the Navy out of hiding, it's best to cause a bit of mischief. Catch a few small fish to attract the big ones. That's right. So plunder and pillage as you see fit, Captain Kenway. Military class brig on the horizon. Good eye, man. Are you ready for this, Kenway? She won't go down without an honest fight. Who's up for taking that brig, lads? Show die! Aye. That's a sound I like to hear. Pipe to corners. Around the navy. They're as likely to ram you as fire a broadside. Castle powder barrel against them. Aye, good thinking. Kick 
Same fast fire! Yes, sir! Good shot to Crippler!
That was a rumble, by God. How do we fare? A fine purchase, no mistake. Now I think it's time to lay low and bribe our way back into secrecy. Agreed. So, how do we get rid of this notoriety we've stirred up? Money, my boy. A well-placed bribe to the right government official. See the military off your tail. Right, let's do that. I'll need to meet these good Samaritans at some point. Smart thinking. Kenway. Need to disappear. You're a wonder, Kenway. You've a knack for this kind of work. It ain't work if you love it. Ah, ah, ah. But I ain't doing this forever, lads. Only until I get enough coin to buy some land and influence back home. 
Jesus, will you listen to your tripe? Still dreaming all about that strumpet back in England when you could have any better you wanted here and now. Ah, such lofty goals for you gents. And here I thought I was in the company of scoundrels. Fine purchase today. What's the crew's mood? All smiles and no teeth. And there's a few talking about meeting with Master Kid to steal from a nearby plantation. Plantation? It's ambitious. Profitable too, if we can manage it. Aye. It's a good idea. down to our deaths, Captain. Why, look, it's the bastard son of the late William Kidd. Still a mere boy, and yet ten times the demon his father was. Fancy seeing you here, Kenway. Still looking sleek and mean. Did you steal that costume from a dandy in Havana? No, sir. I found this on a corpse. One that was walking about and talking shite to my face only moments before. Huh. 
So, what's this I hear about a planned raid on a plantation? Not keeping secrets from me, are you? Not very well. Every day, schooners packed with sugar sail past, coming from plantations nearby. Most times, they stop here, sell off a few crates. There's one man visiting today that had earned you a fine profit. So if you'd like to rob his plantation, I'll point him out. I would. Nice, nice, nice. Is it a Mr. Beckford that owns this plantation? That's the man. He owns dozens round these islands. And he's bloody rich. Just the sort I like to see robbed. His agent is around here somewhere. Find and follow him. And he'll lead you straight to your prize. Burford, Manning, to me. We've done with this place. Aye, sir. What's our course? We'll return to the plantation and there take stock of our inventory. It's a good harvest this year. You might not talk to loads of This isn't anything like a friend with Fort Ken. Nonsense, man. I had a delightful conversation with a chap just now. We came to quite an understanding. As you say, sir. All up and unfurl, boys. We're going home. You come back! Hold on! And a clear shot! the look of a man crafting a bold idea. The look I've seen before. You mark well, Ade. I've just overheard one of the Beckford's men talking grandly about his plantation and all the cargo he's keeping there. And it gave me the idea that I might take these goods off him and sell them off for a better price than he'd ever ask. <laughs> ah, a man of vision. I like this idea. I see them. Ship ahead, sir! Ease off the wind! All sail! She'll take it! Loose tops and royals! Fire! Put a shot right through there! Fire! Ready to fire! They are firing, sir! Of 
man's working for Peter Beckford's people. Do you know them? The Beckford's and the Sugar Land. Aye. Beckford's and the Draxes. I never worked at plantations, but I knew their names from hearing other men curse them. But you worked a plantation, no? A modest one, aye. As a striker in the boiling house. Boiling house? Was it water they boiled? Or something else? Cane juices. It's a hard process making sugar. Dangerous, thing. Must be why it fetches such a dear price. What's it like? Toiling on a plantation day and night. Well, with the cane sugar cut and harvested, it's run between two metal rollers that crush the juice from the plant. After collecting the juice, it was time to boil away the waters from the sugar. This we did in time just before coffee. Let me tell you, brother, boiling sugar is near the hottest thing on earth. Just a touch on the skin will stick like bird lime and burn on, leaving a terrible scar. Jesus. risk to anchor too close. The soldiers roving the plantation would catch us for sure. Drop here then and sneak ashore. We'll look after the jackdaw. such disarray. Bit of a do, sir, that's all. It's Wellington's birthday. And you saw fit to get pickled on duty. No oh, bother, sir. We have everything sorted. So we'll soon see, won't we? For you must double the watch this evening. Double, sir? Whatever for? I believe I was followed here, young man. By pirates, if my eyes on me. Though the ship was uncommonly large for such rascals. Certainly wasn't slavers, though. Not a ship that size. In any case, double the watch. And keep your damned eyes wide for anything suspicious. You up there! Look alive, man! You've a job to do! Apologies, sir. I'll keep my eyes peeled. going on here today? How do you suppose you'll be able to ring that alarm if you're pissed drunk and barely able to stand? Speak to the man in charge here. I require entrance to the warehouse. Which of you dogs has the key to the warehouse, huh? Is there no one sober here? Fetch me the warehouse key, if you please. 
What was that, Joe? Key to the task is the key, goddammit! Someone find me the key! Hmm. Be the pay. We all want to get to our point. <laughs> and curse me later. if he wants to keep his land. Old man! Alarm! You can curse me later. Now you work. The master won't take kind of the broken gun.
You there, stop. Say hello to the Prince of Dice. No! That jokes. Pay for the task you have. Here's to our pirate republic, lads. We're prosperous, and free, and out the reach of kings, clergy, and debt collectors. Near 500 men now pledge their allegiance to the brethren of the coast in Nassau. Not a bad number. Ruth. Yet we lack sturdy defenses. If the king were to attack the town, he'd trample us. Then let us find the observatory. If it does what these Templars claim, we'll be unbeatable. Not that twaddle again, can we? That's a story for schoolboys. I mean, proper defenses. Steal a galleon, shift all the guns to one side. Could make a nice ornament for one of our harbors. It will not be easy to steal a full Spanish galleon. Have you one in mind? I do, sir. And I'll show you. She's a fussock, she is. Fat. And slow. Jackdaw handles nice. Pinched her from the Spanish, was it? Aye. In the midst of a hurricane. Just before the treasure fleet was smashed against the shore. Was the hall aboard as rich as men are saying? A thousand times that. I reckon a million pounds worth of reals was sunk that day. Careful. 
love a hurricane. Might have a dive there one day. See what we can rummage up. Diving them wrecks would be a nice change of pace for us. No need for violent actions against merchants and such. Well, that's some soft talk coming from a pirate. And as it happens, I mostly agree. We'll save the clashing of cutlasses for the military. And them that get in our way. Here she goes. No telling what you may find out here. Like staring through a waterfall. Don't soil your breeches, lads. I got this. Face with her. Hear that, Kenway? Keep your distance. We'll strike when fortune favors us. And the cover of darkness, most likely. Aye, oh, you may come to that. Ground on every inch of sail! More sail! Give me more sail! Reef in all top! Reef the men! Pull up gallons! to the wind. Sponsors, let's ride this squall. All in the stunsel. Reef the mains. Blew up gallons. Ease off the wind. All in all sail. Let's ride this blow, lads.
Charles of Maine. He's as reckless as they come. An old friend of yours? Not a man I call a friend. But we've been doing this kind of work for so long, I can't help but respect the man. Sailing for that island. I know the place. A natural stronghold used by a French captain named Ducasse. Julian Ducasse, the Templar. Name's right. Didn't know he had a title. I know the man. And if he sees my ship, he'll know it from his time in Havana, meaning he may wonder at who's sailing her now. I can't risk that. And I don't want to lose that galleon. Let's think on. And maybe wait till it's dark before hopping aboard. Captain has the helm. Loose!
Gentlemen, as is custom among our kind, we do not plunge headlong into folly on the orders of a single madman, but act according to our own collective madness. <laughs> the object of our attention is a square-rigged galleon, and we want her for the advantage she'll bring Nassau. So I'll put it to the vote. All those in favor of storming this cove and taking this ship, Stomp and shout I! Those who oppose, whimper nay. Never was the King's Council so unified. Curiosidad, ¿por qué no miras tú?
Remember the gift you gave me? Well, it answers just fine. Mr. Putra! As bold as a musket ball, and still half as sharp. I'm sorry about this, mate. But I can't risk you telling your Templar friends about me still kicking around. I pity you, Bukenyi. After all you have seen, after all we showed you of our order, still, you embrace the life of an ignorant and aimless rogue! What's this? His petty larceny, the extent of your ambition. Have you no mind to comprehend the scope of ours? All the empires on Earth abolished, a free and open world without parasites like you. Que l'enfer que tu trouveras soit le fruit de ton insouciance. The cove is ours! Yeah! 
I just saw you were logging out, so I thought I'd stop by and give you something. A little welcome gift. We give awards to our top-notch employees for doing quality work. And they're nice to have, since there's no official bonus scheme here. I already have about 11 or so. Oh. Bonjour? Of course. I'll pass it on. Well, looks like Olivier wants to meet with you. It's exciting. Follow me. It's on the top floor, so it's not hard to find, but the rest of this building can be confusing to first-timers, so we had the tools team whip up a great map application. Check your communicator. I added a waypoint to Olivier's office. Should be easy to find. Olivier's a nice guy. He won't bite. Unless you are specifically ordering me to abandon it, I won't uh, jeopardize our flagship project. Edward Kenway is the... But this is... But this is how Hollywood got its start, right? With pirate movies. Douglas Fairbanks, Errol Flynn, and now we have access to the real deal. <sighs> wait, wait. Exactly. We'll talk about all that together at the shareholders event. Right. Looking forward to seeing you too. Take care, Letizia. Salut! Hi! Thanks for coming in. I know you're busy. So, I reviewed some of your data. Pretty raw stuff. Obviously, we need to scrub off some of the dirt to make it family-friendly. Maybe give Edward a voice like uh, James Bond or something. More of a ladies' man. A beautiful city, no? So the main reason I asked you here concerns is something called the Observatory. It's uh, been mentioned a few times in the footage you found. I'd like to encourage you to focus on locating this specific set of memories as soon as possible. If it were up to me, on s'en acquiesce. I wouldn't bother. But some bigwigs at Abstergo Industries have been hounding me for days. So, follow whatever leads you find, and hopefully we can... Oh! Incoming call. I have to take this. We'll keep in touch. Bonne journée. Alan, bonjour. Oui, 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 tout va bien. Naturellement. Je sais pas si...
Quoi Je sais pas si... Hi, John from IT again. You got a second? Good. I'm adding a waypoint to your map. So, uh, a colleague of yours left for vacation this morning and forgot to send a video file she promised me. Since I hate just about everyone else on your floor, I was hoping you could help me. Could you transfer the file from her computer and deliver it to the courier when she comes? It'll be easy. You just wander over to their animus, log in, and transfer the file. Easy. And please be snappy before I find a reason to hate you, too. Keep it at three hours session. A locked door? Not a problem. That's the advantage of me having level one security clearance. Now, you do, too. Don't abuse it. Log on, and I'll walk you through this. Dad, 
Dad, I was so pissed off. I wanted to scream at you. I, I failed, and you knew it, but you said nothing. And I stayed mad for weeks. I thought you were, you, you were patronizing me. I thought maybe you decided right there that I was never going to be the man you wanted me to be. But I realized just a few years ago that you checking your watch, that was the clue, wasn't it? You let me win because I had been so patient. And I guess that impressed you. You know, maybe at that moment you thought it might be better to be my dad instead of my mentor. I, I don't really know. Maybe for you, they're, they're one and the same. You know, either way, I'm happy to know that both my mentor and my dad are looking out for me that day. I didn't understand that then. I think I do now. December 23rd, 2012. Sample Recovery Unit Team Lead Fisher Case reporting on Subject 17, Desmond Miles. The subject was deceased and unattended. Time of death was placed around 0 hundred hours and 7 minutes with conditions favorable for DNA sample recovery. We had some initial concerns about interference in the vault, but given the skill and talent of this team, we were able to capture useful data. I personally retrieved the subject's backpack and extracted a number of objects of interest to undergo detailed analysis. The subject displayed burns to the right hand, severe enough to fuse the bones, indicating some kind of spontaneous, intense burn trauma. Honestly, we've never seen anything like it before. Head, neck, and torso remained in good condition. I hand-selected recovery agents to retrieve fluid samples, blood and saliva. We then commenced material extraction and were able to preserve several exemplary samples. Data analysis and sequencing is already underway and I'm told proceeding with exceptional ease. Thanks to the cloud database and the work of Abstergo Sample Recovery Unit 3. The legacy of Subject 17 will continue uninhibited as Sample 17. Oh, you're better at this than I'd hoped. Now zip on down to the lobby. Come on. See that file you acquired? 
I wouldn't recommend watching it. I mean, you could, but it's unpleasant. So once you hand it off, just pretend this never happened, okay? Otherwise, you'll just go to bed feeling sad. Anyway, the courier should be waiting downstairs. She's been here a while. I suppose it goes without saying, just because you now know how to hack all your colleagues' computers, it doesn't mean you should. I mean, not every day, right? <laughs> no, seriously, though, that's illegal, so don't be a dick. Unless that's your nature. I can keep this up, you know? This job is well below my skill level. Yeah, well, your coffee is shit. You could use some practice. What? what? No, no, no. I followed that recipe to the letter. It's an art, Sean, not a science. Oh, look who's here. So you didn't forget, after all, you're just incredibly rude. And made poor Rebecca here wait for nearly 30 minutes. You lie me. Be nice. Sorry about him. He's high on his own supply. So, how should we do this? Data transfer? Great. That should do it. We'll email you the receipt. Till next time. Take care, Sean. Bye-bye. Yes, bye. And don't expect any more free coffee. Arrogant. She's great, isn't she? Hey, I just got word the courier has come and gone. Wonderful, you're a miracle. No, 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 that's an exaggeration. You're not a miracle. You're an employee, doing a job. But thanks for helping out. Anyway, thanks. Have fun pirating. Rules for no reason. Yeah, I've been pushing it to five, six hours every day. Check mine three times between the five. You were late again this morning. What's going on? I don't know. It's kind of sterile. Assistance au niveau 2, projet échantillon 17. Support to the second floor, sample 17 project. Be careful now. As the data moves, there are security programs constantly monitoring the data flow. You need to sneak past them or they will destroy your data and send it back home. Thank you. 
I have now resumed the practice of dressing as a man. I have put off my woman's dress. Why did you take it? Who made you take it? I took it of my own free will, with no constraints. I prefer a man's dress to a woman's. You made an oath, Jeanne. You swore to never again dress as a man. I never meant to swear that I would not resume the practice. Why have you done so? Because it is more lawful and suitable for me to return to the practice of wearing a man's dress. Being always among men, than to have a woman's dress. I have resumed it because a promise made to me has not been. How is he? Our three, doing well. Are we still in 18th century Hungary? No. His connection is so stable, he's jumped between a few ancestors today. We're in 15th century France now. Turns out he's related to one of Joan of Arc's executioners. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, Eileen, yesterday Vidic asked me to help him work out some of the bugs in his audiovisual renderer, uh, and I told him... No, no, no. Come on, Satish, not you. It wouldn't be permanent. A few months at most. Months? That will kill every ounce of momentum we have. It won't, I promise. Honestly, I think this could help us. If I can get a look at what these people are doing, we could... Come on. He's trying to pull you over to his side. Don't you see that? He's luring you with quick victory and prestige. That's not what this is about, honestly. I need to get back to work. Eileen, I'm sorry. Do what you must. I'll survive. Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32, April 2nd, 1981. Host Eileen Bach, DNA sample SB1970. Miriam, Miriam, are you awake? What? Miriam, they're coming for me. Who oh, is? Is it God? I see them from my window, amassing in the courtyard. My time is up. But don't say this. You don't know that. Forgive me for this, Miriam. But I must tell you something. The artifact. We have it. But only Oscar and I know its location. Don't tell me! They will release you. Your family has connections. You must take the artifact and bring it to the assassins in Paris. Please don't! I don't want to know. It's safer if I don't. Hush now. If I die, knowledge of its location dies with me. You must bring it to the assassins. Assassins? I don't understand. The spy of St. Petrus. No, I don't want to hear. Sam, seven! Seven! Hello? Eileen, hi. It's Carl. Carl, I know it's you. Sorry, you just sound exhausted. Did I wake you? No, no, I'm... I've just been busy. It sounds like it. I'm just a little tired, that's all. No, I mean, your your project sounds fascinating. Your colleague, Dr. Warren Vidic, he called me recently and he told me what you've been up to. He what? Warren? Yeah, he told us about your research, memories, ancestry, all of that. He even asked if we'd be willing to come in and... No! Jesus, no! What the hell is he doing? Eileen, it's okay. We signed some papers, non-disclosure stuff. No! He's trying to fuck me over! Damn it! Eileen, we just talked about my mother, just like you and I did. World War II. That's all. It's the artifact. The what? Carl, if he calls you again, you tell him you work through me, okay? That's it. Vidic has been a pain in my ass for years. And I don't need him getting all the glory for my two years of hard work. All right. Uh, so how should I go about this? I mean, the wheels are in motion. I... I don't know. Just go through me if he contacts you again. Please? All right. You'll do that? Of course. Yes. Thank you, Carl. I'm sorry I was short with you. I've just been exhausted. That's all. It's all right, hon. Just... just take care of yourself. Morning, Eileen. We're almost ready. Just a few more adjustments. Hmm. Okay. I had the team do some research on this artifact we've been chasing, and it appears the Third Reich actually found something matching its description sometime in 1940. Uh, Eileen, are you all right? Sorry, yeah. I'm fine. Just a little scattered. 
Vidic called my ex-husband last night. He wants to put him in the Animus. To find the artifact before us? Exactly. Well, it would be faster using Vidic's Animus. And maybe that would get us back to our original work. Satish, if we let that happen, then all our money dries up. Lillian is paying for us to find the artifact, not improve our methods. Do you understand? Right, of course. I'm sorry. Let's just... let's just burn those bridges when we cross them. Are we ready? Yes, just a few more adjustments, Senorian. I made a small change to the genetic input modulator. I'm hoping that buys us a few more minutes. Even a few seconds would be nice. I'm ready. All right. Settle in. Variations to choose from, but in 
the end. The uh, lucky one was me. I'm the Desmond their best calculations spit out. I'm the Desmond they left their messages for. And I guess I have to live with that honor. Where are you going, the market? No, I... My parents have asked me to come live with them, and I'd like to. Oh, what do you mean, live with them? You live here with me. I'm sorry, Edward, but my father is right. You had a decent wage when you worked the farm. Why can you not be satisfied with that? With me? Decent wage? That job was near as damn it to robbery. You want to be married to a peasant the whole of your life? All right, Edward. All right. You leave now, Caroline. You'll never know what's coming to us. Caroline! Caroline! Oh. Shit. Wake up, can we? that about? He left this morning with the galleon, as Faith will discover a good use for this old cove ourselves. Aye, we'll make something of it in time. We could keep a fleet here if we like. And with a bit of fixing up, it'd be a decent place to call home. Might even convince my wife to come one day. You're married, are you? In God's eyes, I am. She left me some time ago. Even so, keep that fact hid away. Most of these pirates don't respect a man with higher commitments than rum and plunder. Call mine honor. Let me know if you find anything. <laughs> 